we have been introduced to the idea of how um, atoms tend to want to uh, want a full shell, full outer shell of electrons, and we saw how a metal combined with a non-metal to form an ionic substance by having electrons transfer from the metal atom to the non-metal atom and the resulting electrostatic attraction between them formed that bond. So now I'd like to look at how we might combine um, a non-metal atom with a non-metal atom. So it could be a non-metal atom uh, of the same element with itself or of one element with another element. So once again we'll use this idea of uh, atoms wanting or tending to want to have a full shell of electrons. Um, so this this type of bonding is, uh, let's give it a name here, it's called covalent bonding. And it is the bonding of nonmetals with nonmetals to form new stuff, new substances. So let's jump right into it. The only thing we need to know here is um, is the tendency of the atoms to want to form a full shell. So I will look first at hydrogen with itself. So hydrogen is element number one. So hydrogen has one electron, so that's one hydrogen. And let's bring in uh, so let's, let's let's see what would make this hydrogen happy. Remember, um, hydrogen only has uh, one shell. So in the first shell, I need uh, I need two electrons. For a full shell, for a full first shell, I'm, I'm going to need two electrons. So hydrogen wants one more. Now I, I like to combine hydrogen with itself. So let's bring in another hydrogen now will represent its electron with a dot. Now what could happen is you know if you, you, you might say well we've learned that we can transfer electrons between uh, atoms. Let's do that. Let's take this electron from hydrogen and give it from purple hydrogen and give it to green hydrogen. Then green hydrogen would be happy but purple hydrogen wouldn't be happy anymore because now purple hydrogen has no electrons, um, and it turns out that that doesn't do. It's, it can't have no electrons. So green hydrogen and purple hydrogen come to a compromise. They say, "Aha! Uh -huh, why don't we share our electrons?" And the other hydrogen says, "What a brilliant idea!" So we'll put our electrons into a bag in the middle. Just like a bag of candy. And right in the middle. So green hydrogen's here, pop hydrogen's there, and there's this bag of electrons in the middle that contains two electrons. And then they will say, green will say, both these electrons are mine. And purple hydrogen will also say, both electrons belong to me. So you can think of this as, you know, if, if you've looked at Venn diagrams, you can think of this as a Venn diagram where these two electrons are now um, the property of both the purple hydrogen and the green hydrogen. So this notion of sharing electrons um, is what defines the covalent bond. It is this attraction, remember there are, there are at least protons, well there's only one proton, there's one proton in here that's attracted to the negative electrons here, the positive protons here attract the negative electrons here, and then these positive protons here attract this negative electrons so that electrostatic attraction is what keeps them in a bond, it keeps them together. So this notion of sharing is, uh, as I like to think about it, is, is what defines a covalent bonding, whereas with ionic bonding we saw that it was the complete transfer of one electron, or rather electron or electrons from one atom to another that causes a, um, a, a difference in charges that cause the bond. So let's go ahead and look at another example.
hopefully it clear things up. So I want to look at chlorine now. Okay, let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is in group seven. So here we have chlorine. It's element number seventeen. Um, since we're looking at chemical bonding, we'll only look at the outer shell electrons. So I'm interested in the fact that there's seven electrons in the outer shell. So let's try to bond chlorine with itself. So I have chlorine here, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in its outer shell. Now, how many more does it need? It needs one more. It needs one more electron to form a full shell because it's already got seven it needs one more to make eight because eight would be the number for a full shell so another chlorine comes along this time I'll represent its electrons with dots and pink chlorine says to purple chlorine why don't you give me one of your electrons and then I'll be happy. But purple chlorine says, wait a minute, if I give you one of my electrons, that means I'll have six left. No, that won't do, because then I won't be happy. So they come to a compromise. They say, OK, how about um, you put one in the bag, and I'll put one in the bag. Let's see if that works. OK, so pink chlorine puts one in the bag, and purple chlorine puts one in the bag and so since it's put one in the bag it's got six left it's holding six and pink chlorine having put one in the bag will now have six be left holding six around itself and pink chlorine says okay since this is you know public property now well not exactly public property this is what we're sharing now so I'm, I'm gonna claim those as my own but don't worry purple chlorine you can claim those as your own too since they're in the bag in, in the common bag so that's let's see if that makes us happy okay so purple chlorine starts counting it looks at the electrons around itself it goes one two three four five six now these two are mine too so I get seven eight Okay, so purple chlorine says, okay, great, I'm happy. Now pink chlorine starts counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I got six in my hands. And since these two in the bag are, are shared, so they belong to me too. So six and two gives me eight. So pink chlorine is happy too. So they are both happy because they now both have eight electrons around each of them. So we see that chlorine tends to form a diatomic molecule. That's why if you have chlorine floating around, uh, it's, it's never alone. It's always in pairs. Similarly, if, if you have hydrogen floating around as an element, it's always uh, in pairs. It's, it's never alone. Let's take a look at another example. Let's look at oxygen next. So oxygen is in group 6 of the priority table. So it's got 6 electrons in its outer shell. So let's draw one oxygen here with its 6 electrons right there. So I have a green oxygen. And let's bring in a blue oxygen. Now, this oxygen, each of these oxygen needs two two more to make it happy because it's got six it needs to fill that hole there with two oxygen. So as you might guess, it's not going to work if um, we transfer electrons. So green oxygen is going to ask blue oxygen for two electrons and blue oxygen is going to say no because if I give you two of my electrons I only have four electrons and that's going to make me unhappy. 
So they say, let's share our electrons. Now they they look at this problem and they say, okay, what about you share? You give me, you put one in a bag, and I'll put one in a bag. So will that work? Well, that's only going to give each oxygen an extra one electron. So that's not going to work. So let's try putting. Let's try each of us putting two in the bag. So green oxygen is going to contribute two electrons to go in the bag in the middle. And blue oxygen is going to contribute two as well. So that leaves two oxygen with four electrons it holds in its hand. And likewise, for green oxygen, it's going to leave it with four electrons it holds in its hand because it's already given those two to the, the bag. And blue oxygen has put two of those in the bag. So let's see now. Green oxygen is going to claim the ones in the bag as its own as well. And blue oxygen is also going to claim the ones in its bag. So let's start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So blue oxygen is happy. Green oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Green oxygen is also happy because it now sees eight electrons around itself. And they're both happy. Therefore, oxygen tends to form a diatomic molecule. You always see oxygen um, in pairs. You, you don't see them alone. They don't tend to want to be alone. So we've, uh, we see something interesting here. It, in the case of hydrogen, I had sharing of two electrons. When we share two electrons, we call this a single bond. And sometimes you see a single line between them. This is called a single bond because, or to be exact, a single covalent bond because each hydrogen contributes one electron. Likewise, as was the case with chlorine, each chlorine contributed one electron, so we call this a single covalent bond as well. Now we come to oxygen, we got something different because now each oxygen contributed two electrons to the bag. So we like to draw two lines where each line represents one electron being contributed from each oxygen. So there are two electrons being contributed from each oxygen. And not surprisingly, we call this a double covalent bond because two electrons were contributed from each oxygen. So let's take a look at what a container full of hydrogen might look like. So we've seen that hydrogen are perfectly happy in pairs. So you might imagine that in a container you could have you know, these hydrogen pairs kind of all floating around, being perfectly happy in their own world. and. Whenever you have a, um, a small number of atoms covalently bonded to each other, we give that a name. We call these little peanuts here molecules. So an atom of hydrogen would be just one hydrogen. A molecule of hydrogen would be two hydrogens bonded together. In this case, it's two, um, depending on which element we're talking about. So we see that the structure of hydrogen is, is um, what we call molecular. And these molecules, these molecules that have a small number of atoms in them, we call these simple molecules, since they have a small number of atoms to each other. And it turns out that there's also some attraction between the molecules. But this attraction is very weak. It's sometimes called London forces or Van Waals forces, but we won't go into that uh, for now. So this weak attraction between them causes them to have a very low boiling and melting point. That's why hydrogen exists as a gas at room temperature. 
Likewise, we can look at the structure of chlorine. Chlorine is gonna, you know, form diatomic molecules like that, kind of floating around in space. They're all perfectly happy with each other. So we have inside the chlorine, we have strong covalent bonds inside the chlorine molecules right there. So strong covalent bonds. Whereas in between the chlorine molecules, we have this weak force. Weak forces between them because they're strong inside because they're sharing electrons, whereas outside of them, you know, they're not really concerned with each other because they're, they're perfectly happy. I mean, they're perfectly happy in pairs. They don't need to get extra electrons from s someone else. So there's this really weak force between them. Um, this weak London or Van der Waals force, and hence they also have a low melting and boiling point. That's why chlorine is a gas at room temperature. And we see the same situation here with oxygen. Um, if oxygen and their strong bonds, oops, this is a double bond, so it's even stronger. Strong bonds inside, and then their weak bonds with other oxygen molecules. So this characterizes the what we call the simple molecular structure um, in, in covalent bonding. It's that you have strong bonds within the molecules themselves and weak bonds outside of the molecules. So because of this structure, we can um, deduce several properties of simple molecular compounds. say that they have a low melting and boiling points because of the weak attraction between the molecules and we saw that they, they don't have a net charge because once they're you know together they're, they're neutral because I started with six for example for the oxygen I started with six electrons here six electrons here and there's still six on this side, six on this side. There's still a total of 12 electrons in the whole system. So no electrons got lost or gained by this system of two oxygens. So there's no net change in the charge. They were neutral to begin with, and they are still neutral. So there's no net charge between them. Hence, they don't conduct electricity. Because uh, in order to conduct electricity, you need charges to flow. And finally, we see that they don't dissolve in water for the same reason. Um, in order to dissolve in water, they need to have some charge. Uh, we've, we've not gone into the notion of solubility yet, uh, but we will look at that later. So for the moment, don't worry about this last point here, dissolving in water. So we see there are quite a number of differences between molecular compounds and ionic compounds. It's quite the opposite. In ionic compounds, we have really strong bonds between the ions. So ionic compounds have very high melting and boiling points. And ionic compounds, um, being ions, they have net charges so they can conduct electricity and dissolve in water. So next, we'll take a look at uh, a different variety of covalent bonding, one where um, many atoms join together to form a giant structure.